That's the sound of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket taking off earlier this week. It was the first time a rocket this powerful was launched by a private company, and it took off from the same pad where NASA once carried astronauts to the moon. So what does it mean for the future of spaceflight and NASA? Lori Garver is former deputy administrator for NASA. She's now general manager of the Airline Pilots Association. Lori, welcome back. Thank you. It's great to be here, Jeremy. And Elon Musk called the experience this week surreal. Uh, What did you think? Oh, it was um, surreal, especially the landing of the two rockets that we were able to see, uh, the outer boosters. Uh, Just the expectations were with the winds that we might not see it. And then when it cleared the tower, that was the goal. And then it went the whole way and it was uh, quite a sight. There were a lot of tears of joy. Quite a sight and a lot cheaper uh, than something like this would have been in the past. Uh, a rocket this powerful might typically cost $350 million a launch or more. This one, just $90 million. How did that happen? How, how did they manage to do it so cheaply? Well, the costs are uh, tough to, to really even quantify since to the taxpayer this had zero cost. Right. You know, they developed this privately and NASA's working on its own vehicle, spending more than a billion dollars a year for nearly ten years now and isn't even there. So once you're gonna operate the vehicle, that's the cost you're talking about in the comparison they SpaceX say will charge ninety million a launch. And we know for the government we would be paying, again, a billion dollars a year and at most be able to launch it once a year. (laughs) And the reasons are complicated but have everything to do with how you purchase, procure uh, these vehicles and what your incentives are. And, you know, the government cost plus contracting, there aren't a lot of incentives to innovate There are incentives to make it absolutely risk-free and uh, get a lot of contracts in a lot of different states and congressional districts, and that leads to a lot of time and a lot of cost. But it sounds like what you're saying is that the government is typically wasting a lot of money when it does something like this. The government is spending their money on people and infrastructure that would be unneeded uh, if you did it privately. I know NASA for a long time has been about sustaining the workforce. So it's it's a little harsh to say (laughs) um, there's no value because there are jobs. My view is those could be better jobs and more jobs because if you're doing it commercially, you're going to be able to do a lot more. This vehicle is going to be able to launch uh, many more times a year than we could afford to do uh, with our own government-developed vehicles. Are there any downsides to all of this privatization in space? I, I don't think so. To me, a downside would have been if SpaceX was the only one, because you really don't want to count on one private sector company. They, at one point, at some point, will be able to charge whatever they want. We've seen this with United launch alliance, primarily on the military launch side. But we have a great situation now because we have SpaceX and nipping at its heels is Blue Origin. And they are probably going to launch something this size in the next few years as well. We have a number of companies seriously going to be flying humans to space. There's Boeing, there's SpaceX, uh, there's Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin. And so the competition is what is going to drive innovation and reduction of costs. And if one of them has a hiccup that takes time to recover, someone else can step in. With the government, you don't have that. You just have single string. NASA has a great continuing role and they should embrace it. And that is to go farther, to do the next thing. If we can launch to beyond low Earth orbit, back to the moon, onto Mars, we don't yet have landing vehicles. We don't have transfer vehicles. We don't have all the information we need on humans surviving in deep space. Huge role left for NASA, and I really hope they embrace it. So do you think it's a mistake then that the Trump administration wants NASA to focus in part on sending astronauts back to the moon? 
Not at all. I think sending astronauts back to the moon is appropriate for the government. I just think they shouldn't wait to build their own launch vehicle to do it. Uh, I would assume that you could spend the money you're developing now on the launch vehicle to build landers and the kinds of things that the rest of the lunar program would need. There might be some of that that could also benefit from competition and innovative procurement mechanisms. I I don't believe it's the goal that is the problem. It's really how how you go about doing it. Was the SpaceX launch the most exciting thing in space this year, or do you think that we've got something else coming in 2018 that'll be just as interesting? Ah, it's early in the year, isn't it? <laughs> right. um, it would be great to have something more interesting. Uh, I do feel that this is a game changer, but if we launch people to the space station this year on either the Starliner, Boeing's vehicle, or Dragon, that could be equally as exciting. I think that is more likely for 19, um, but it is an exciting time for space. Every single uh, hotel was sold out, and we aim to keep the American public, I think, inspired for a long time being space explorers again. That's Lori Garver, a former deputy administrator for NASA. She's now general manager of the Airline Pilots Association. Lori, thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you.